Okay. Hi, my name is Alex John Meyer and I consider myself a realism artist. I've never wanted my work to be perfect. In fact, I feel like being able to see a human's touch is what's most interesting to me. I most enjoy working in watercolor and ink or acrylic, sometimes mixed with texture media, to create texture because I love texture. I've been painting professionally for 11 years, but I feel like I've been an artist my whole life. I started drawing and painting as a little kid, <laughs> but it wasn't until high school that I realized that I could do art as a career. Actually, my art teacher would create art classes specifically for me, so I would be the only student painting whatever it is that I felt like working on at the time. And my Latin teacher and my art teacher were actually good friends, and my Latin teacher would let me skip out of class and <laughs> go back down to the art room for the rest of the hour and work on whatever it is that I was excited about at the moment. After college, I worked as a cake decorator, and that's whenever a lot of the things that I learned really have come into the work that I create now. Um, I used a piping bag, which normally you would use like happy birthday or put the details on a cake. I used one of those for the first time and I was like, it's like a paintbrush, but it's three dimensional, oh my God. And so now I use piping bags with texture media to create the fine details. I have this painting of a, a tire and on the side, very, thinly piped with texture media, it says superior, it's supposed to be funny. Um, and then I use a spatula with different texture media to create like the rust on a wheel of a tire. And uh, there's a painting I did of Lucky Charms and where the cereal pieces are floating in milk and I use the spatula to make that cereal look all gritty and like, you know, how oat pieces are supposed to look. I always enjoyed painting, but it wasn't until 2008 that I decided to make it my full-time career, selling paintings and commissions to local collectors and St. Louis businesses. There have been so many people here in St. Louis that have been amazing to me, and I don't know if my career would be where it is now if it weren't for those individuals. I met my mentor, Craig Downs, and he took me under his wing, and he taught me a lot about running an art show, hanging a show, and how to promote myself and get people's attention so they'd want to buy my work. Not that buying work is everything, but it helps. The artists that I'm most inspired by are Gerhard Richter and Chuck Close. The reason I love Gerhard Richter's work is because he's just as well known for his large-scale abstract pieces as he is for his photorealism. I love going to the St. Louis Art Museum and going to the last room of the new wing and sitting down and being in awe of that gigantic piece. Then you turn around and right behind you is his beautiful piece of a woman at a quarter angle with the back of her hair. It was so many years that I didn't even realize that it was a painting, I thought it was a photograph. So I love Gerhard Richter because he proves that an artist doesn't have to pick a box to be successful. But the artist that I'm most inspired by is Chuck Close. He's most known for his large scale photorealistic portraits. Some of them are 12 feet or 15 feet and you can't believe that they're not a photograph. But after he suffered a seizure, he was paralyzed from the neck down, and it was later discovered that he had a spinal artery collapse. So after a lot of physical therapy, though, he was able to regain the use of his arms and legs, but he's needed a wheelchair ever since. And so after this incident, if you will, um, his work dramatically changed. The way he had to work changed. His approach to working changed. They built a scaffolding on a, like, it, raises up and down and left and right so he can stay in his wheelchair and work. His pieces now have evolved from incredibly photorealistic realistic to what he calls hot dogs and donuts. <laughs> They're little squares of hot dogs and donuts, but when you take a step back, the portrait comes into place. They're colorful and so vibrant, and but He's just as well known for his work before the accident as he is for, you know, after the accident. So the reason I love Chuck Close is because he inspires me. My favorite quote by him is, inspiration is for amateurs. The rest of us just show up and get to work. I myself have heart disease and a lot of other actual chronic illnesses. And if Chuck Close can show up and get to work, then so can I. <laughs> because there are days that I, I don't feel well and there are days that I don't feel like doing this, but I do my best and I get to work. And every day I'm so thankful that people are interested in what I have to say. 
I enjoy creating, creating paintings that are a commentary on American life. My first solo show at Third Degree Glass Factory was about the experiences of living in the country versus living in the city and how different, but maybe also how similar those can be. Um, my current body of work though is about modern consumerism and uh, how everyday objects and commercialism have like made their way into our emotions and the things that we've become attached to, like toys. We all have incredibly personal like memories of a certain toy from our childhood. Um, and, but then also some other themes that I really enjoy painting are about the diversity but also the division in all of our communities, whether that be about race or the LGBT community. Um, so I like to do paintings that are of seemingly everyday objects but paint them in a slightly different way, whether that's like increasing the saturation so they're very bright or playing with the focus or the contrast. I like my paintings to seem a little bit more vibrant than real life. I know that not everyone will look at my work and understand what I'm trying to say. That perception is based on the viewer's own life experiences and the, perhaps the best part of what makes art so interesting is that we all see what we have lived. I've always felt that art has the power to bridge the gap between any humans. One of my absolute favorite paintings that I've ever made was from a spring day out on my partner's farm with his parents. He and I had been married for about 10 years at this point, but this was the first time that his dad asked me to ride along with him to check on the land of his farm. So I grabbed my camera and I was thrilled. And that day we rode along the countryside in Fayette, Missouri, and I took so many pictures of whatever it was that we came stumbling upon. So his dad had recently bought the property of a nearby family and was planning on knocking down the abandoned house and and the accompanying barns and sheds that was on the property. And so I got out of this truck and I went into this old barn and I did not dare touch a thing. I was actually afraid of like getting tetanus. <laughs> But I took some beautiful pieces. Um, this motorcycle that I painted, this tire, but my favorite is, uh, it was an old western rusty bike laying against the tin wall of the shed. And there was a window nearby and the light was shining in onto the bike. And it looked to me like the bike was longing to be out in the sunlight again, to be feeling the wind rushing by and to feel like a part of the world again. And so I created this painting and actually a few years later my husband's dad died and so I named this painting after him. And so it's called Ray because this painting to me represents living one's truth and having the courage to step out into the world. Hopefully this painting serves as a ray of light for other people too. Over the last 10 years, I've been selling my original prints and paintings and commissions from my studio here in Creve Corps. Um, but also I do pop-up shows like Let Them Eat Art or Court, which is a quarterly showcase for queer artists here in St. Louis. Um, this coming spring I'll, will be the seventh year that I will be the curator for Transcending the Spectrum, which is a LGBT art exhibition put on by the Metro Trans Umbrella Group. I'm their events director and it's my honor to put together this amazing show. Last year we had over 500 people attend at the Mad Art Gallery and 52 artists participate. Um, but other than charity events and other than selling out of my studio, I do occasionally, I would say maybe once or twice a year, participate in group shows at galleries like Art St. Louis, the St. Louis Artist Guild, and the Foundry of St. Charles. They're wonderful people and I'm always so thankful to be included amongst their, their exhibitions. I also really enjoy participating in charity events. It means a lot to me that I can give back to St. Louis through my art. So the first event is called Wallball, which is, benefits uh, Artscope, which is a children's arts education program in Tower Grove Park. And then the other event in the summer is called the Art of Pause, and it is it benefits the St. Louis Effort for AIDS. And I really believe in what they're doing, and their new facility is just amazing. So the fact that I can help them to help other people means a lot to me. So if you're interested in finding me, you can contact me, either send me a message on my Facebook page, and I also have work at Artisans in the Loop on Delmar, across from Blueberry Hill. Or you can send me an email through the contact form on my website, which is alexjohnmeyer.com. 